So last week at the beginning of the lab, a lot of people struggled with Sigwin and some of the commands, and I guess complaining that it was going too fast, so I'm making a video right now just so some people can watch it before and maybe get familiar with some of the Sigwin commands before. So um, this right here, um, that is the Sigwin command line, and it's always set to a certain folder or location. Um, you can use a command called pwd to display the current directory that you're in. So let's hit pwd and it'll show that Sigwin is at the home Anthony folder. Okay? And the root folder of Sigwin is not the same as the C drive, it's not the E drive. Um, it's actually in the root Sigwin folder, which we uh, chose in our setup. So it's actually in here. So that's uh, C slash Sigwin slash home slash Anthony. So that's where we're at right now. And that's the directory that Sigwin's using. So any commands we type, um, or if we want to compile something, we have to be in the folder that contains the files that we need. Okay? So um, the next command is ls. ls is used to list all the files that are currently in the directory. Hit enter, and it shows just some folder. These are actually um, hidden. The other folders are actually hidden from Sigwin, so you won't see them. But uh, any other standard folder, you'll be able to see for sure. Okay. CD. CD is a command that's used to change directory. So if you want to move from folder to folder, you would use CD. So we'd go CD space. So say I wanted to switch into my sum folder folder, um, like this, if I were to do it on Windows, um, you do cd sum folder, and then you can see here that the directory that it's working with is sum folder. And it's the exact same as say I was in my Windows Explorer, and I hit sum folder, it would be the exact same thing as doing that. Okay. Another thing is cd dot dot. Um, so we're in the sum folder folder, and if we want to go back to the previous folder um, that we were in, the one one level above, we would go cd dot dot. Okay. So if we do that, you'll see that we are no longer in the sum folder folder. We are in the folder that contains the sum folder. Okay. And if we do pwd, and you'll see that. Okay. But it's most likely that your files will not be here. They will probably be somewhere in your C drive and uh, you will want to switch into that. So in order to switch into that, you'd go CD and then C colon. Okay. So there we are. And that's the same as if I were to click on my sidebar here. If I were to click local disk C, then it'll just be there. Okay. So we're in our local disk C and we want to get to the files that we're going to use eventually to uh, compile. Okay, So me personally, I stored my files in a Dropbox folder. So I'm just going to go there on my Windows Explorer, Dropbox, a um, bunch of folders, Okay, source, and then right there. Um, for now I'm just going to go to my lab folder. Okay, so. Now that we're in our C, uh, we can change directory to uh, folders that are in the C drive. So this right here is the directory that stores the files. So we're going to try and get there on our Sigwin. So first we're going to go CD users because that's where uh, that's the first folder that we have to get to. Then CD Anthony, and then CD Dropbox. Okay. And here, um, the folder, the next folder we have to get to is third year, and third year has a space. So we have to, if we type in CD third year, it won't work, okay? It won't be able to find the, the folder because it treats the space as um, a separate part of it. So what we have to do is we have to put this folder right here in quotation marks and that way it will handle the space like it's part of the folder name. So cd 
third here in quotation marks and there we go so um, so now we're in our third year folder and we want to get to the next folder um, for me it's elect 278 TA um, so we're gonna go CD quotation marks because there's a space elect 278 TA and then hit enter and then there we go one good habit when switching folders is to type ls after to know what folders are there uh, what files are there uh, etc so our source files are in the lab one folder so I'm just going to change into lab one okay and then change directory to src okay and uh, there's a hello one uh, hello world file that I created just to demonstrate the capabilities of the compiler but let's uh, put that aside for now I'm gonna go ahead and use a command called mkdir so mkdir is used to create a directory you go mkdir space and then the name of the folder that you want to create so mkdir stands for make directory and it creates a folder for you so um, let's call it test folder okay and you'll see here that a new folder was created called test folder okay so now we're done creating our folder we demonstrated mkdir and I'm gonna go ahead and teach you how to use compiler so the compiler is um, written on one line uh, that's how you use it and it basically takes a file in its input and turns it into an executable file that will run on Sigwin or even Windows. So let's list the files that are in the source folder. And you see right here there's a hello world.c that I created. Um, this contains the code for the hello world program, but right now you can't run it. You can't run a .c file. You have to compile it and make it into an executable. So the way you do this is GCC, okay, and then here you want to type in all of your input files. So uh, for us right now, it's just hello world, hello world, dot C, okay, and then you want to use a dash O, okay, it's just always there. And then here you want to type in the name of the executable file that you want it to write to. So for us, we're just going to use hello world and hit enter and here you can see a new file pops up called hello world.exe on the windows but we can execute it on our sigwin using dot slash in the file that was just created so hello world and right there you see hello world um, on your terminal and that's that so yeah, there's Sigwin for you, and I hope this helps before the lab and makes it a little easier at the beginning.